Right. So my name is Larry Ho. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Lucas. And uh, in this uh, next uh, session, uh, what I wanted to share with you um, is to focus a little bit on the community side of Sonic and looking at uh, their different, talking about a different uh, deployment of different flavors of Sonic. And, but the focus on this talk in the next 20 minutes is focusing only on what if you are an operator and you are a customer, you are a solution provider and your customers want to start with the community Sonic as their base of their deployment. And what are the gaps, what exists right now and how do we try to maneuver through those gaps in order to make it a deployment ready community software. Okay. So, uh, I started this presentation and preparing for it, and I came to a quick realization and say, it would be a good introduction to go back to the different flavors of open networking hardware. Um, and it's roughly in the literature, um, you keep hearing about bare metal, white box, and now bright box, which stands for branded white box. And so how they differentiate one versus the other. But in this particular slide, what I try to communicate is a NOS focus. What is the role of the network operating systems in these kind of bare metal white box versus the bright box? And then I will take a look at how Sonic changes this picture. All right. So this is what it was leading up to the pre-Sonic days and crossing into the early part of Sonic uh, journey where there's still a lot of proprietary NOS exist. Bare Metal, by and large, uh, started the open networking desegregation world. And the champions, for those of you who's been around and follow this journey, you know are the hyperscalers, right? In Sonic, it is Microsoft, it is Alibaba. Those are common public knowledge. And so what they do is the NOS is owned in-house. They have a sufficiently large engineering team to do the software all by themselves. So they do not need to worry about a lot of the support and the vendor lock-in questions. Then, but the, if you want to adopt it more widely on the desegregation model, this is where Whitebox started its journey by saying, hey, we're going to have commercial NOS that supplement this pure Whitebox bare metal to make it a solution that can be deployed. So, and then from there, of course, there's a derivative of being a branded one. So now I'm talking about, hey, within the NOS side, the key word here you key across the ownership is proprietary, all across in this flavor. It's all proprietary, whether it's bare metal, white box, and bright box, leading up to the Sonic day. Okay? There is vendor locked in, whether it's locked into NOS vendor or the bright box vendor or the hardware vendor. It is still going to be a locked in unless you are the very few um, hyperscalers that you can own everything by yourself, then there is no locked in, all right? Uh, the cost, of course, the TCO where people care about it. If you can afford to own your large engineering team, uh, networking team, uh, then you're gonna have to pay for uh, the white box and the bright box because commercial NOS charge license royalties, right? So with this picture, let's take a look at Sonic. Now let's divide a Sonic into two different flavors the proprietary Sonic and the community-based Sonic. Let me clarify one thing, because I know these are recorded sessions. So let me start in here. It is not the purpose, not my purpose in this talk to trying to say which one is better. Should you go with community Sonic or should you go with proprietary Sonic? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm trying to say here. What I'm trying to address is, should you decide to go one way versus another? This is some of the challenges that you will be seeing, okay? So, so let's get the proprietary Sonic. So proprietary Sonic out of the way. What I'm trying to make assertion here is that if you try to deploy proprietary Sonic distribution, where there will be a license charge, there will be royalties and all that come with it, it is no difference than the olden days when you have your Kimberlis, when you have your Pika 8 that supports all the different proprietary nodes. It's just a proprietary nodes, okay? No difference on it. But the minute you start talking about, but I want to start with Community Sonic. I want to take what the community can offer and deploy it. Then the picture changes somewhat. 
So the next slide that I'm trying to do is to try to give some kind of guidelines and distribution. Because a lot of proprietary sonic distributions claim that they are community sonic. So what I am trying to do, this is debatable. I mean, the first one to uh, admit. I'll put down a list in here, checklist. All right, checklist through your sonic distribution and said, does it meet these criteria? Is your source code available in a public GitHub? Right off the bat, ask that question. All right, is your source code a clone from the community branches? And also, you are committed to resync as the community branches advances. You will resync periodically. You don't necessarily have to resync every six months. That's a huge effort to do. Huge engineering effort. But Sonic is backward compatible. So therefore, as long as you commit to a periodic sync, you fit the definition. You can check it off. There is platform-dependent software that required more company in the Sonic world known as Psy. I'm not going to go into the Psy. I assume that many of you are familiar with it, but it is the key point is, it is a platform-dependent piece of software that is not necessarily open source, depending on the ASIC vendors that's providing for that particular platform-dependent software. So I'm just calling it out and say you do not need to be open source on that in order to qualify as a community Sonic distribution. And of course, it has to be hardened and would target hardware switch. Community does not test against hardware. They test against VMs. All right, so you're really not accessing to the VMs, uh, to the hardware. You need to test it. Next to the last bullet, that is very important. Contributions back to community. It is more than, in many cases, in the last five years, well, actually, time flies. Um, Edge Core started distributing Sonic and deploying it back in 2020. We first got into Sonic business in 2018, but 2020 is our first deployment. And there were always at that time some interest in community Sonic. And the questions always ask, will you contribute some of the customization that I need you to, to add on to it back to the community? The answer is yes, of course. But that's not it important. Many vendors will raise their hand and say, of course we'll contribute. Why? Because there is no deadline. So we want to put it out there and say there is a submission deadline that you will commit to submitting it. All right. Now, making it appear in a release, that's a different story. That's the second part of the journey, and that is something that the community has still a lot of work to do. And finally, the support SLA. You're going to need to provide support. So this is fundamentally the checklist for me as, we, as I look at it and say, in order for a distribution to be qualified as a community-based Sonic distribution to be deployed, you've got to check off this list. So now, let's take a look at how this picture changes with deploying with Community Sonic. Well, the good news about it is Community Sonic, therefore, is open source. Remember the first mark? It is the source code has to be available. It's not a black box as far as Sonic is concerned. So therefore, it is open source, right? So now what we're seeing, and it's a fact, that even the hyperscalers, not the Microsoft and the Alibaba, those are the early days of the uh, Sonic world. But now we are seeing uh, hyperscalers um, in a world that is really wanting to take the community Sonic and then take it in and start customizing and evolving it. And so, uh, the bare metal world, of course, they can accept that. But the differences between white box and bright box, in my opinion, is now blurring the line because there really is no brand. You are communicating, you're putting in a community Sonic in your box as your NOS. You're not branding that NOS. It's just a community Sonic. It's open source. All right. And so it's blurring it and the customization can still be handled by third party services. Okay, companies like PL Vision, they've, they've done a lot of those free advertisement. So, uh, and so, uh, or system integrators, third parties that can also take on some of the work.
But the whole idea is it gives you the flexibilities and putting it together. And putting it all together is a solution stack. Is there vendor lock-in on this in this picture? No, there is no vendor lock-in because the NOS is opened. All right. And so uh, the support though is still a challenge. You still are asking yourself who can actually support it. In this case, there are solution vendors out there, support solutions offering to be able to support customers that want to deploy multiple Sonic stacks. Folks, in Edge course experience over the last uh, four years, 2024, uh, we talked to so many, many more customers where the interest in Sonic came from two major sources. Number one is that they can access the source code. Those are the bigger ones that wants to start modifying themselves, the, the, the source Sonic to their own, customize it to, to fit their exact needs. But there is another part, the primary factor is the vendor lock-in part. They do not want to have vendor lock-in. This is something that proprietary solution, any kind of proprietary software will lock you in to uh, your deployment. I'm not saying that, you know, if vendor locked in, you don't care. You can walk in with multiple proprietary solutions and you're fine with it. And there are many operators, that's fine. They, they want to do that. In fact, they'll continue to carry their OEM stacks while they're adopting Sonic. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. If that's your cup of tea, nothing wrong with it. But if your vision is trying to drive for the lowest TCO, this is the cheapest possible solution. I'm not saying it's easy, but it is the TCO is the lowest, and you want to drive it, then Community Sonic is it. All right, so let's talk about some of the uh, barriers, some of the gaps in order to deploy what we heard. We've deployed many Sonics uh, to many customers around the world over the last four years. And what are some of the common complaints about Sonic if they want to deploy Sonic? So in the next few slides, I try to separate that into day zero, day one, and day two. So that is pre-deployment when you're doing POC, day zero. Day one is during the deployment time. How do I configure orchestra? How do I, if I come from a legacy, how do I overcome that? That's day one. And then day two is after everything is set up, how do I get through the product lifecycle support with a community Sonic? Those are the gaps. So let's start with uh, day zero. So here I'm talking about the common complaint is it takes a long time to go through the POC. Long time. Why? Many factors. Number one, it's relatively unknown. Lack of confidence is still an open source. It's still relatively easy. The legacy solution companies will keep telling you and say, ah, that's just a toy. Not really usable. All right? That's a lot of the, the skepticism that is still going on. And so they want that. Uh, but frankly, that's not the only one. It's customers that want Community Sonic. They want multiple stacks, multiple solutions. All right? There are many uh, hardware vendors that's offering switches that can be deployed with Sonic. Edge Core is one, but there are a lot others. So how do I know which one? Am I going to start with POC in all of them? So they need a way to be able to go through that POC quickly. Now here I'm talking about, just now I can't talk about in the community, when they take a community release, there is no hardware testing. So who can provide me? Isn't that nice if there is a stop that they can go in and then do the funneling and say, let me go through the first level of qualification. I start with six vendors and I want to narrow into two or three to go through my real final P POC. Do I have that step? Are your optics, your transceivers qualified? We, we, we're, we're seeing a lot of um, deployment that is into the 400G space. You know how expensive it is to deploy ZR, ZR plus? And then you have to qualify it beyond the optics into Sonic and add some of those drivers and really do that. So which vendors can allow me to do that so that I know these are pre-tested? That's the reason why it leads to a lengthy POC. And of course, to qualify and pre-qualify vendors, um, wouldn't it be nice that I have some test suites that subject everybody to pass? Um, vendors tried, testing vendors tried it several years ago to try to come up with these kind of solutions. 
but it's not easy to sustain. It is something that, because you need to support multiple vendors, you need to be able to test interrupts. Some, some customers still do not want to deploy the same brand on the tour, spine, and leave everything. They want to mix and match. So how does that work? All right? And then, of course, testing. You look at what's available in the community in testing. It's fundamentally just feature-level functional testing. That's what they have. That's not sufficient to go through POC. They want to do error injection. How do you test MCLAC so without, without error injection? All right? System-level testing. All needed. Whoever can come up with the test case test suites and be able to provide it to the customers. And there are more than that. This use is not just for POC, as the, as the next slide will show. Okay? These test suites that address more than functional testing helps the customer to pre-screen the solution vendors and then take it into, as the next slide show, into the CICD regression testing coming up. The last point I want to make here is the uh, community sonic focus on the uh, data center use cases. A big part of the lengthy P POC is because every customer thinks sonic is magic. I start with it, but I want to add this protocol, subtract that protocol, tune this and tune that. That's when you, you uh, become a problem. So my point here today in this pitch is the community and S4, if you want to um, deploy community-based sonic, Focus on a limited set of uh, use cases and then forget about it. Everything else, please go to proprietary. Okay, that's a key point that I'm trying to make here. All right, so we start with day zero. Let's quickly go through T1. Uh, day one, okay. Migration guide, very important. I come from a cumulus world. How do I migrate to Sonic? Well, that's actually not difficult, but someone needs to do this piece. And the community needs to provide that. This is my, my point. Don't wait for a service provider, third-party software to come in here and try to make money this way. This is such an easy thing to do, but the community need to add this kind of focus in there. Okay? Talk about the orchestration controllers. There's not enough of uh, the uh, open source is not catching up on this yet, but there are a lot of proven, reliable controllers out there fabric managers to do this kind of work that can allow you to automate. And then Sonic itself needs to have that REST APIs in order to latch onto the uh, NetOps tools. That's when you get into the support part beyond just the deployment day one part. And I already touched on the test cases, which is trying to uh, take that and uh, you integrate it into the network operators uh, CICD process to accept. So these are the things that are, that are, that are needed here is just, I'm not going to go through that in the interest of time, but this is what I meant by limited case. It took me a while to come up with this um, together with uh, solution partners, but uh, it's been verified with our, at least as far as Edge Core is concerned, over the last four years. There you go. You have nine common use cases. My advocation here is start with this nine as a community and then go with that as your first fit and not fit. A customer that wants to deploy community, I will come to you and say, take this nine, are you doing that? BGP, IP clause, that is such a simple thing to do and a lot, if it's an 80-20 rule, it's gonna encompass a half of the customers always want to deploy that, especially when they want, were interested in Sonic, want to be more conservative. So out of that, these are the um, uh, deliverables actually. I've actually touched on every one of them. You need test results. You need test results and you need tools out of the box in day one to help to generate the, uh, the customers have a smooth transition process. You need conversion tools. You need REST APIs that can actually integrate with customers' own NetOps tools and make it available. And then finally, you also need enterprise support. So the last slide, or second to last, before the call to action is uh, the community needs a role to do it, to it here. They, they do some roles. And one thing, if you pay attention to the community, it's all 100% features oriented. They only talk about features. They don't talk about use cases. What I want the community to do is get to a point and say, if you want to deploy BGP on IP clause, these are the checklist. 
This is what the community provides you with these tools, with these conversion kits, and these are the test cases that's specific for that use case, not for a feature. Think about the difference and be able to do that. And trying to go through that and, and drive from that angle, from a use case angle, topology angle, rather than as a network solution. Don't try to think of it as a VXLAN. It means nothing as far as the deployment is concerned. Okay? So uh, my time is up. So I wanted to uh, uh, just a few call to action. This is slide typically for OCP is all the actions for OCP, but this is a Sonic workshop for crying out loud. So here, um, if you go to the slides, it's going to be available online. These are all links. And these are the Sonic community links. Start work groups. Operators who wants to deploy community Sonic. This is your lowest TCO, but one of your calls is to participate. Drive the uh, community from your angle. Right now, the community is completely dominated by vendors like us. So, bad from a community point of view. Operators need to come in and join up an influence. New subgroups to talk about use cases. Talk about testing beyond functional and features and trying to drive it that way. These are all gaps to deploy community, Sonic as is. So we're going to need to do that and, and expanding the test guide and so forth. Okay, I'll stop here.